This changes everything. It changes everything. Well, that changes everything. And that changes everything. It yes, sure it does. does. That changes everything. You know what that means. Anytime a caution comes out in the closing laps, NASCAR bunches up the field and extends the race for a two-lap overtime shootout. But it hasn't always been this way. In fact, for most of NASCAR's history, a late race caution meant the race ends under caution at the scheduled distance. But as we got into the 2000s, this became unpopular, like throwing stuff at the track unpopular. This is from the 2004 Talladega Spring Race. The caution came out with five laps to go with Jeff Gordon leading Dale Earnhardt Jr. NASCAR never restarted the race and the fans didn't like it. That's the worst thing I've seen all day right there. Yep, I'm afraid so. Later that year, NASCAR introduced a green-white checkered policy to give more opportunities for a green flag finish. In the 20 years since, almost 160 Cup Series races have gone to overtime. 57 times and counting, it's changed the winner of the race. And today, I'm counting down what I believe are the top 10 wins stolen because of an overtime finish. Now, before I get to the list, let me tell you some of the crazy things I found out while researching this topic. Like Ricky Stenhouse, he would have zero career wins. Yeah, all three of them came in overtime. How about Kevin Harvick in that 29? Kevin Harvick stole more wins than anyone. Six times he benefited from that extra restart. Guess they called him the closer for a reason. On the other end of that, Kyle Busch lost seven races after leading when that final caution came out. As a Jeff Gordon fan growing up, some of those overtime finishes stung. He lost four races that way. We'll talk about some of those coming up, but right now, it's about another driver of the 24. Number 10. We're going to the 2016 race at Chicagoland. It feels like 20-year-old rookie Chase Elliott's about to break through. He's got two second-place finishes on the year, and in this race in Chicago, he leads 75 laps and has a comfortable lead over Martin Truex Jr. with just a few laps to go, until the caution comes out from Michael McDowell. This means overtime. The leaders come down pit road, and Elliott loses a spot to Truex. On top of that, three cars stay out, meaning Elliott has to go from row three. Truax gets a great restart and takes the win, while Elliott comes home third. I expect it. Nothing's yours until it's over. So, I mean, that's part of life, man. Elliott would suffer a lot of heartbreaking losses after that and six more second place finishes before finally breaking through two years later. Without overtime on that day in Chicago, that first win would have come a lot sooner. Number nine, the 2021 Talladega Spring Race. You may remember this one for Joey Logano's violent flip. Matt DiBenedetto remembers this as one that got away. He takes the lead with 11 to go and keeps it all 11 of those laps. The problem for him, debris brings out the caution and sets up overtime. He holds the lead until the final lap when he goes up high to block, but Keselowski has more momentum on the bottom. He takes the win. De Benedetto ends up fifth. It's tough. Uh, it's just all so circumstantial. We talked about it a lot before the race, Jamie, and it's, uh, it's tough. Our day will come. Our day will come. I'm just lucky to drive this thing. But he didn't get to drive that thing much longer, and that day never came. De Benedetto lost his ride after that season. Without overtime on that day in Talladega, he would be a Cup Series winner. Number eight, the 2023 Daytona Summer Race. Final green flag stop of the race, Kevin Harvick comes to pit road fourth in his group. He comes out first. Coming off pit road, that group has the advantage, and Harvick now controls the race until five laps to go when Ryan Priest violently flips on the backstretch. This sets up overtime. Harvick's in the wrong line. The RFK teammates storm by on the outside, and Chris Buescher gets the win. Without overtime, Harvick would have had one last feel-good win in his final race at Daytona. Number seven, the 2012 Martinsville Spring Race. Hendrick Motorsports is looking for its 200th Cup win as an organization, and is there any better place for it to happen than Martinsville? Hendrick drivers led 443 laps, and with a few laps to go, their drivers are running one, two, three. The organization's two all-time winningest drivers, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson, are setting up for a duel. 
With four laps to go, Gordon noses ahead of Johnson to take the lead until David Rudiman stops on track, setting up overtime. On that overtime shootout, Clint Boyer takes it three wide into turn one, and they all crash. Ryan Newman steals this one on the second overtime attempt. Johnson finishes 12th, Gordon 14th. You know, I didn't want to see that last caution. Uh, man, we, we, we had such a great battle with the 48. I really thought that we had a chance to get Rick his 200th win today. Just unfortunate that uh, this Milo Chevrolet is all beat up and uh, didn't have a chance to get the trophy. Without overtime, Gordon would have won Hendrick's 200th race by that much. Also, he wouldn't have had this conversation with Clint Boyer after the race, and I'd argue this intentional crash later in the year at Phoenix doesn't happen, and Boyer doesn't run after him. Number six, the 2010 Daytona 500, also known as the Pothole 500. Coming to two to go in the scheduled distance, hold on, pause this. Look where eventual winner Jamie McMurray is, row four. Anyway, Greg Biffle is ahead when they crash behind. That means overtime. On that restart, Harvick slices and dices his way to the lead from fourth, and McMurray follows. There's another crash in turn two. Fun fact, a few days earlier, NASCAR changed the rule to allow multiple attempts. If they didn't, Harvick would have a second Daytona 500. Instead, he lines up on the front row with McMurray for a second attempt and McMurray takes the lead in this Daytona 500 for the first time on the 517th mile. McMurray wins without overtime. That doesn't happen. And Greg Biffle is a Daytona 500 champion. Number five, the 2011 Daytona 500, the year of the tandem. And it seems like David Reagan and Trevor Bain have this figured out. Here they come up the middle, taking the lead in the Daytona 500 with four laps to go just in time for a crash behind. You know what that means, going to overtime. Is anyone surprised? Not Kyle Busch. I told you, I told you, I told you all through speed weeks. I said, it don't matter how long you can push because it's gonna be a green white checker. <laughs> On the restart, Reagan wants to stick with Bain. He crosses down in front of him before the start finish line, but that is an illegal move and Reagan has to serve a penalty. The caution comes out, setting up a second attempt, and Trevor Bain wins the Daytona 500 in just his second Cup Series start. Without overtime, no restart, no penalty, and David Reagan would be a Daytona 500 champion. Number four, the 2018 Daytona 500. Daytona again? Yeah, I mean, look, since NASCAR introduced this rule, more than half the Daytona 500s have gone to overtime, and 2018's another example. Denny Hamlin takes the lead, coming to two to go, and now he's trying to control both lines and bring home a second Daytona 500. But there's a big pile up behind. You know what time it is, overtime. Hamlin chooses the wrong lane on the restart. Eric Almirola and Austin Dillon have more momentum, one lap later, Almirola goes around and Dillon wins the Daytona 500. Hamlin ends up third. It, it's really about the third car in line. If Whoever that third car in line is closest to, uh, that line goes. And we just didn't have the line that went. Without overtime, Hamlin would have won his second Daytona 500 here. It also would have been the first of three Daytona 500 wins in a row, something no one has ever done. Hamlin would have been one of only three drivers to win it four times or more. Number three, the 2014 Fall Texas race. It's the first year with the win and you're in playoff format, and eight drivers are looking to win their way into the championship four. Jeff Gordon takes the lead with nine to go. A few laps later, he has a comfortable lead, and it looks like he's on his way until Clint Boyer crashes, setting up a green-white checkered. On the restart, Keselowski goes up the middle and makes contact with Gordon. Now Gordon has a cut tire and he goes from a spot in the championship four to a 29th place finish. You know, your emotions are high. That was a huge, huge race for us. We had the car, we had the position. So proud of my team. And I'm proud of Jimmy Johnson for winning that race, not letting up you know what, win that race. Oh yeah, like he said, Jimmy Johnson won. Without overtime, that doesn't happen. Neither does this. 
One week later, Ryan Newman keeps Gordon out of the championship four by one point. Gordon would have already been locked into the championship race at Homestead, where he has the best car. He qualifies on the pole and leads a race high 161 laps. Late in the race, he's battling for the win, but a late caution comes. Gordon pits from second, clearing the way for the championship four to battle amongst themselves. If overtime doesn't happen at Texas, does Gordon win his fifth championship? Number two, the 2007 Daytona 500. The two best cars, Tony Stewart and Kurt Busch, crash with just under 50 laps to go. This opens the door for someone else. And could that someone be Mark Martin? He takes the lead on pit road with 24 to go. And he keeps it all 24 of those laps. But there's a crash with five to go, setting up overtime. We get one of NASCAR's most legendary finishes out of it. Kevin Harvick beats Martin in a photo finish to win his only Daytona 500. You know, just uh, just wasn't meant to be. I, I, I didn't get the job done. Without overtime, one of the sports legends, Mark Martin, would be a Daytona 500 champion. Number one, the 2023 Daytona 500. Remember earlier when I said no one had more races stolen than Kyle Busch? I bet this one hurt the most. He and teammate Austin Dillon make their move with four to go, and Bush has the lead in the Daytona 500, coming to two to go, until Daniel Suarez spins on his own, bringing out the caution. Back in 1998, that would be the win, boys. Instead, we've got overtime. On the restart, Bush is in the wrong lane. The outside has all the momentum. It goes to a second attempt, and there's a crash on the final lap. Ricky Stenhouse wins it under caution. Bush finishes 19th. Today, he's still the winningest driver in NASCAR history to never win this race. Without overtime, Kyle Busch would be a Daytona 500 champion. Again, there are nearly 50 other examples of this, but I believe these are the 10 most significant wins stolen by overtime. Did I get it right? Are there others that should have made the list instead? Please let me know what you think down in the comments. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.